you can buy this barbecue sauce by the gallon and i'm bringing a gallon home with me today i'm not kidding i really i'm if you have it here i'm taking one home can i hello we are back and we are at ruby tuesday finally we are in our final season of Julia Tries Everything and one of our very last episodes. But it's a happy ending. We're finally getting to Ruby Tuesday. We are gonna be trying all the appetizers, sandwiches, burgers, steaks, ribs, desserts, cocktails, everything you can imagine here inside these walls. We're about to go ham on these appetizers. Ready? Yeah. What we have are the barbecue chicken street nachos. There are black beans, cheddar cheese, jalapenos, guac, sour cream, pico de gallo, and a drizzle, a hefty drizzle of barbecue sauce on here. Nachos are like salads to me for many reasons, <laughs> but mainly it's really hard to get the perfect bite, right? Like there's so many accoutrements to work with. You gotta really make sure that you're getting the perfect first bite, okay. This tastes so similar to our CPK barbecue chicken pizza. Barbecue chicken pizza, which CPK basically invented. If you love barbecue chicken pizza, like, you know, that's the most popular menu item they have over at California Pizza Kitchen, not here. This is so similar to the barbecue sauce. It's so delightfully tangy and vinegary. Oh, wait, I gotta go in for one more bite. Up next is something that I'm very excited for because you're getting to try their most popular menu items on one plate. So we have the Ruby Signature Sampler. We have boneless wings, which we added some honey mustard sauce that looks extremely creamy, creamy spinach artichoke dip, and mozzarella sticks. The honey mustard is a little lemony. I'm wondering if it's just because the color looks lemony that I'm thinking it's lemony. Wait, here we go. This is why I love having you here, Charles. Oh. Mama. Thank you. Here you go. Oh, oh, be careful with that sauce. It's really like a, it's tangy, but it's also, it's, is it not slightly lemony to you? No, it does seem like that. The chicken tenders are really, really thick pieces. Moving on, moving over to our artichoke dip, which has a lot of, I believe it looks like it's Asiago. Did it say, it doesn't say, but it looks like it's gonna be like an Asiago on here. And their chips have some flavoring happening. I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to understand if I'm tasting what I think I'm tasting. There's a little bit of paprika, a little bit of like, a little bit of like a peppery thing going on there. Ooh. It's not like a cumin, but maybe like a cayenne with a little bit of paprika. I don't know. It's got a little bit of a zest. Okay, now that I've licked my chip. Wait, I, I can't put that one in there because then you can't try it. Sorry. Just licking chips. When you come here, don't do that. Okay. These are just the right amount of crispy where it's not too light to where it's breaking and almost disintegrating, but it's not too thick to where it feels like you're chewing on it forever. Feels like the right amount of thickness that you want for your sauce. Sauce, dip, whatever you're eating. They put so much spinach in here and you can't even taste it. You're just tasting artichoke and cheese. Honestly, I've never had a spinach artichoke dip do me wrong. This one isn't gonna do that to me either, you know? Oh man, oh man. Extra crunchy. I love this marinara sauce. Mm. Mm. Honestly, the mozzarella sticks are always gonna be like fine to me, but the sauce, I just love that this sauce isn't, a lot of times the marinara sauces we get are really sugary and really sweet. Sometimes people are trying to appeal to like a really young crowd, so sometimes they add more sugar into it, where this tastes just more tomato-y. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know, what's wrong with me? We have the Ruby Relaxer, one of the signature cocktails you can get here. It has vodka, coconut rum, schnapps, pineapple, and cranberry juice. And yes, I still say vodka without the D or with the, how do I say it that people hate vodka. it? Vodka. How do you say it? Vodka. 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 Yeah. Vodka. Yeah. Vodka. Vodka. I don't, I don't see the D. Just let me be me. This is a size large, so you can get one that's, a, you know, a little bit more approachable, but we're large and in charge over here. Oh. 
Do you want me to, can I leave? Sure. Can I just go? Chelsea, it's so good. You know what's funny is that it has coconut rum in it, which I hate with a passion. It's probably the fact that it's the peach and the cranberry, but the levels of it, it's not, none of the flavors are competing. It's like, um, everything I say just sounds so contradictory to who I am as a human being. I hate fruit punch with a burning passion, but this is like a high quality, delicious fruit punch. Just, you're gonna have a little shoddy camera work after, but that's fine. Oh, this is like how I wanted jungle juice to be girl. Right. Okay, we're gonna stop talking about the drink for a second and eat again. We have the hickory bourbon chicken wings. Okay, these look really, really sticky and candied. Okay, I'm gonna put in a little bit of the ranch. Mm. <laughs> Delicious. It's so perfectly wet. Mm. <laughs> I'm not tasting too much of the hickory. There's not a huge smokiness necessarily. A really delicious, sticky, candied flavor to this. We have coconut shrimp, which is served with a sweet chili sauce. Okay. Ooh, I never know if I'm doing too much sauce. All right, we'll find out. Phenomenal crunch. The sweet chili sauce is not as sweet as other places that we've had, which complements the coconut shrimp even more because it's not just sweet on sweet on sweet. The coconut shrimp is extra coconutty. These are extremely toasted and give you that really great crunch and a really lovely sweetness. And the sauce is just adding that extra kick spice that you want. If you do not like spice, do not dip it in there, ask for something else on the side, or just eat the coconut shrimp as it is. We are on our final app of the round, which are new to the menu, sticky ribs. It is their signature ribs, which are flash fried and tossed in some barbecue sauce and some extra barbecue on the side in case it's not saucy enough for you, but these look hella saucy. It reminds me of like a Worcestershire, Worcestershire, A1 and Ooh, that's delightful. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, maybe this one. Oh, I'll be able to handle it. So there's a variety of ribs, right? Right, okay. Sometimes they're super soft and juicy where they can melt in your mouth. These ones have a really nice, like, I, I need to find another word than candied crunch because I said that for the last few items too. But there really is this wonderful candiness to it that makes it so, you have the softness underneath, but you're getting like a, there's like an extra layer of flavor. Ooh, the ribs are definitely my favorite. Oh wait, I've never really had drinks as my favorite, do I? Yeah, I feel like I was surprised you didn't say the drink. It's because I, for, like drinks are a different category almost. So it's like at the very end of the episode, I have a favorite drink. Cause it's hard like comparing a drink to a food item. Okay, I'm gonna say the ribs and the Ruby relaxer are my favorite. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be fascinated if we find a drink that I like more than this one. This this is some tough competition. We're in round two and it's all about burgers, handhelds, and sandwiches. Don't know why I had to do it like that. We are starting with the smokehouse cheeseburger. It has cheddar cheese, hardwood smoked bacon, barbecue sauce, crispy onion rings. And when they say crispy, oh! They say crispy, oh! Is it King Arthur's sword? It felt like I was the chosen one when I did that. Um, when they say crispy onion rings, they aren't kidding. These look extra, oh, oops, Julia, hold it together. These look extra crunchy and thick. Oh, the bread is toasty. It feels like the kind of bread where it's toasty on the outside and then soft on the inside. Okay, did that with a lot of conviction. Ooh, I hope this is the same barbecue sauce we had earlier that we couldn't stop eating. Can you see it? <gasps> oh, she's beautiful. Yep, and shredded lettuce instead of just like one big piece of lettuce. Thank you. Oh gosh, this red onion. Sorry, bud, you're falling out. Okay. Do you guys sell this barbecue sauce? You do? You could buy it here. 
Okay, if you have it here, I'm taking one home. Uh, <laughs> oh, mm. This barbecue sauce is the light of my life right now. One, the bacon is thick cut enough that it feels substantial, but it still breaks apart when you eat it. One of my pet peeves with bacon is when it's really thick cut, but then when you try to bite into it, you know, like the whole thing slips out and then you have like a bacon piece dangling out of your mouth. But out of all the burgers that we're trying here today, of the handhelds, this is like a really great, like level one, I would say. You know, you wanna take a step up from your cheeseburger, but you're not feeling like you wanna add queso and jalapeno to your burger. This is a really great place to like start. I have meat in my teeth. Oh gosh. Okay, we have the jalapeno bacon queso burger. This is topped with hardwood smoked bacon, jalapenos, pico de gallo, and cheddar queso. Wait, sorry, can you, can I have, can I show this to camera? What is it? What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, oh my God. I could buy this? Can I? Back to the burger. That felt important though. <sighs> you know when a burger just looks plushy, it looks like like it's really nicely thick and coated in the cheese. And that's that's a oh my gosh, look at how much can I even that's some gorgeous oh and a toasted bun. Okay, I'm cutting this one in half as well. Which honestly means that you're getting a half too yeah, that hasn't say. been destroyed by me. Thanks, you do like me. <laughs> you Thanks do like me. me. Okay, this looks messy as hell. Amen. Wow. Incredibly juicy. I would say juicier than the previous burger that we had. I like the cheddar cheese actually more in the previous burger than I like this queso. This queso sauce is extremely velvety and takes over the whole burger. But for some reason, the other one is like, it's just hitting home more for me. But this one is juicy as hell. You're, oh, I, I'm trying my best not to eat another bite of it because it is delicious. But I think that the Smokehouse Burger one is more my flavor profile. This one has much more of that, I hate to be generic and just be like Southwestern style, but it does have that pico de gallo, it does have the jalapeno in there. It's just a stronger, bolder flavor. And sometimes I don't always want that, but if you want a juicy burger, gotta go there. We have a Philly cheesesteak hoagie, which has tender shaved beef grilled with peppers, onions, mushrooms, and it has a cheddar cheese queso on top. So not cheese whiz, not cheese whiz. but we will forgive them. Maybe. Maybe. She's the messiest drunk bitch at the party and I love her. She came to the party with a 30 rack, a Red Bull, a handle of vodka, a beer bong. She came with everything and she brought it. This is a party. I'm in love, it has the right amount of pepperiness, you need to taste it so you can tell me like if it's hitting the spot, but my favorite thing about this bread, it's really lovely, toasted and crunchy on one side and then kind of soft and soggy on the other side from all the meat. So it's just giving you that like squishy <laughs> feeling when you bite into it. This is juicy, peppery, lots of pepper, like black pepper, grilled pepper. This is hitting the spot for me. I would, I just want to eat this and I don't want to eat anything else on the table. Okay, here, let me give you a fork. No, wait, here, maybe cut me off a little corn. I actually You judge. want the bread? Yeah, I oh. judge, I judge a hoagie. From the bread as well. The bread is important. Girl, it's messy. Oh my God. It's, you just have to lean into the mess. <gasps> oh. Okay. Oh, okay. Tender, meaty, delicious. It makes sense that this is one of the most popular menu items. You I know see what? it. What? As a Philly girl. That actually tastes like a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah? Yeah. This is fire. Philly approved, kind of. Mm-hmm. I'm still eating. I'm not shopping. Nope. I think we can just cut and just eat. And then we'll like come back for dessert round. Just skip the other rounds. Yep. What? I like ate the whole thing. We haven't even finished the round and I ate the whole thing. I'm so sorry for everyone who's about to watch this video because I'm about to have Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
we have the El Toro Loco. It has tequila, strawberry, triple sec, lime juice, and it's topped with Red Bull. And it's it's like at diners when you know you get your milkshake and they give you the canister that it came in for a little extra. They give you a little extra of your Red Bull, whatever that you didn't you know finish. Which also Red Bull is expensive, so thank you for doing that. Tequila. Okay, fine. It's like a tequila strawberry popsicle. It doesn't have basil in it, but it does taste like, for some reason, like a strawberry basil mojito tequila Red Bull version. See, that's dangerous to just keep adding it on top, but also it's more dangerous to be chugging it on the side. Red Bull forever and always tastes like battery acid to me. It's just what it is. But adding at least the strawberry in here makes it very, I'm not gonna say delicate because tequila and Red Bull have never been delicate, but it really calms it down a little bit so you don't feel like battery acid is going down your throat. Yeah, I wanna do a fun fact. In 1972, Ruby Tuesday was formed by a man named Sandy Bell from University of Tennessee. He was in a frat and he asked a bunch of his frat bros to help raise money to start the restaurant. There were a lot of chain restaurants around this time popping up and doing really, really well. The one that Sandy was noticing was another restaurant that has a day of the week in it, TGI something. And he was like, I bet I could do that and I'm gonna have a name of the week in there, but I need to figure out the naming situation. He had a frat bro who loved the Rolling Stones, one of the songs, Ruby Tuesday. The song came out five years before the restaurant came out, so a lot of the clientele would know that song and be like, all right, I'll go there. So that's the end of my fun fact. I'm hopped up on Red Bull, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have ate all that Philly cheesesteak. We're gonna try one of their new menu items, the Bacon Club. Hardwood smoked bacon, which we know I like, lettuce, tomato, <laughs> served on Texas toast. Texas toast is just the most wonderfully fluffy grilled bread you could ever have. Perfect for grilled cheeses, perfect for like a lot of breakfast sandwiches. It is, oh, what is that sauce on there? Signature sauce, okay. What do we think their signature sauce is? Oh, it's kind of like one of those tangy um, mystery sauces. It, has, it definitely has pickle in there, uh, like a relish and ketchup, mustard, mayo. Okay, okay. Lots of bacon, lots of bacon. The bread is plushy. Do you see those thumbprints in there? Amazing. This is basically a grown-up BLT, kind of a fancier BLT to a certain degree because of the Texas toast. My one complaint would be that it's a lot of bread and I would want extra sauce on it just because it, it Texas toast is thick. Or maybe just extra tomato, just something that adds a little bit more of a juiciness to it. We have the ultimate crispy chicken sandwich. It's topped with hardwood smoked bacon. They love their smoked bacon. Cheddar cheese queso, lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, honey mustard, oh, and honey garlic sauce with a brioche bun. This is a lot of sauce on here. Wow. Oh God, it's so... This piece of chicken is, it, she's, she's, okay, can you see how large she is? She's large. Barely made a dent. Yeah. Tried really hard though. The bread reminds me of like, is it the Martin's brand? The Martin's potato bun bread? Oh, some of my favorite potato bun type bread. One second, I need one more bite because I actually did not get in there. This sandwich is massive. Honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be one of my favorites. Philly cheesesteak obviously is the winner of this round, but this chicken sandwich is a close second. Sorry, my eyes got really watery all of a sudden because you know when you're really overcome with emotions of carbs in front of you like this? It just brings tears to my face. Okay, we have the grilled chicken carbonara. It has bacon, mushrooms, peas, and a Parmesan cream sauce with fettuccine. All right, we do judge most restaurants by their fettuccine, if we remember correctly, because every restaurant has this, and it's always people's favorite, and I'm like, come on, y'all. There's so many other flavors. But we're gonna try it, and we're gonna see where this falls on our fettuccine scale. 
<laughs> the chicken is juicy and tender and having a little bit of a pea gives you like a vegetable burst. <laughs> it's, you know, like a garden burst. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. Um, I'd say that this one isn't as much of a salt bomb as other fettuccines we've had in the past. So if you want a salt bomb, I guess put extra salt on it. That's weird to say. And more cheese maybe? No, but the, there's a lot of cheese in here. It's extra creamy, but it's not like a super, super salty cheesiness. So if you want that extra salt, you just put extra salt on it. But I think that the chicken is moist. Oh my gosh, I think I have the fettuccine still in my throat. Go down there. <laughs> down. <laughs> I need my gua sha. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just like a one fettuccine noodle stuck in the back of my throat and it's like, hey, I still want to hang out. Okay, sorry. By the way, the restaurant does not come up with the menu selection, I do. Hence why I put a Mai Tai in the round with pastas. I don't know why I did that. I should have chose like a red wine or sangria. Weird choice by me, but we're gonna commit to it. We have the Island Mai Tai. It has light rum, triple sec, lime, orange, pineapple juices, and it's topped with some dark rum. This glass is going home with me. Look at, look at him. He's giving like a, right? You're like, stop. Okay. Ooh, she's tart. She's a fun tart little Mai Tai. A lot of times the Mai Tais are really, really sweet. But this one tastes like, like a pineapple gummy bear with a little bit of a Sour Patch Kid and then some orange juice put on top and then like a quick dose of some sunscreen in the background. This is a lactose intolerance dream and nightmare all in one bowl. Here we have the crispy chicken mac and cheese. It's a crispy chicken breast topped with marinara sauce, melted mozz, and Parmesan cheese. It's then served atop some signature mac and cheese. So it's like a chicken parm cutlet and then a, a soup of cheese. It looks like a commercial. You see how the cheese is? It reminds me of how Velveeta cheese is. It's like that really thickness. It's almost like an Elmer's glue mac and cheese which I want. I want some glueiness in my cheese. Oh, Chels. I know. Do you have a fork ready? <laughs> okay, gluey, Velveeta-y, but not Velveeta at all because it's like um, more of like a calmer white cheddar. Oh my goodness. But do you know what I mean? It's sticking to your mouth. <laughs> it just wants to cozy up and stay there. Look at it. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try a piece of the chicken. This. <laughs> You're having a really bad day, or you know what? Let's say you just got out of surgery and it's your first meal you're allowed to eat. You know how you're always having to do liquids and like you're stuck with that hospital jello? That first meal you get to have when you get out of the hospital, they're like rolling you out. You're gonna be like, take me to Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> you're gonna be like, get me the crispy chicken mac and cheese. <laughs> it's just something that I feel like if you haven't eaten for whatever reason for a really long time and you're finally getting the chance, this is what you want. It's just like, it's like a little sleeping bag. A little sleeping bag of mac and cheese. Oh, what is that? This goes better with pasta. Oh, <laughs> oh our they... very red sangria. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> so, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Unplanned. <laughs> Unplanned, but you know what? That is, that's a fact. Oh, Chelsea review time. This is like berry to the face. Berry to the face. That's your Chelsea's that's my review. review. <laughs> what kind of berry? Because as you've been to Knott's Berry Farm, you know all the berries. Which berry is prominent? Honestly, it just, it's a medley. I'm gonna randomly tell you it's red raspberry. <laughs> it's a raspberry and Granny Smith apple. We're gonna try one of their new menu items, which is a meaty baked penne. It has meatballs, grilled sausage, and it's tossed with penne and a tomato cream sauce. Also, topped with mozzarella and parm cheese, and then they bake it until melted. Just based off of the fact that they're like broiling the cheese on top and making it all golden and toasty like this with the sausage. I have high hopes. Oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. Interesting. 
-hmm. It's talking to me. Yes. Meatball is tender and tame. The sausage bites, though, those are, they pack this really lovely little punch at you. It's kind of like a little, like, jab, jab, you know, a little quick jab. But the penne, it has a really lovely al dente-ness to it. Has a great chew, and the cheese on top also has a bit of a chew. So it's like a little bit of like a chewy, saucy pasta. We are now about to eat the Parmesan shrimp. It's a Parmesan cream sauce tossed with tomatoes, grilled shrimp, and penne pasta. Look how cute she is. I wanna get extra sauce in here. The shrimp has a little bit of like a, a crunch, dare I say? What's the right word? Not crunch, but kind of a snap. Yeah, does, do, does shrimp have snap? Does, okay. This shrimp has snap. This sauce is lighter than our mac and cheese sauce we had earlier. Even though it says Parmesan cream sauce, which would make me think that it would be kind of heavy, but compared to that mac and cheese sauce that was glue in my stomach, this is oddly light. You wouldn't expect something like this to taste kind of like fresh and light because it is cheese but it does have a little bit of a freshness to it that I wasn't expecting. This is the blackened shrimp and sausage. It's penne pasta topped with creamy tomato Parmesan sauce. The blackened shrimp has a little bit of like a gumbo. I know how we talk about sometimes how I like swampy flavors, <laughs> but it's like that extra kind of like salty, almost like how like, um, what is it, crawfish that we have before where it's like, it kind of gives me like a Cajun flavor to it. This one's really fun and intriguing. It's like every time you take a bite, you're getting a little bit of a different flavor profile out of it. Which for me, a lot of times you can get that palate fatigue, where this one I think is gonna keep you interested. So you're not gonna like take a few bites and then start staring at your friend's plate and being like, how's yours taste? And they're like, do you want a bite? And you're like, no, 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 it's fine. And then you just start like eating their whole plate. That's not gonna happen if you get this one. Favorites of the round. This is hard because each of these has a different flavor profile that's very specific to a type of person. So what I recommend for one person would not be what I'd recommend for the next person. So I'm gonna say for myself, my favorite is definitely gonna be the crispy chicken mac and cheese. I just think it is a lovely cheese flavor bomb in your stomach. It's gonna sit there for a few days, you know, like three to five business days, but it was enjoyable. I don't regret any of it. And then from the drinks, I, you know what? I stand by my Mai Tai choice. I love it, it's delicious, the cup is cute. Get your Mai Tai with your pasta. We have a pot roast, slow cooked pot roast served over mashed potatoes with crispy onions and garlic toast. And we got some corn and some peas. You know, you gotta have a little bit of a vegetable here, feeling good about ourselves. So Chelsea, our, our gorgeous camera woman, but she's more than just gorgeousness, obviously. She has a gorgeous, lovely fiance who cooks amazing meals, and he has an Instagram account that Chelsea actually, it's Chelsea's Instagram account, but it's all her fiance's work, and it's all these really elaborate meals that he makes. It's at Saucy Gullet, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> Anywho, to get to the actual point is, this looks like something that Chelsea's fiance would make. Like he makes these really like homey big meals that you're like, what time did he have to make this? I still don't know. I don't know when he has the time to do it, but this is something that he would make. Like yeah. he's like, I made this with love over like the course of 48 hours. And you're like, when, okay. Confused. Pot roast. Mmm, the crunch from the onion. It's delicious. This tastes like something that your fiance would make for you, <laughs> that your grandma would make for you. It tastes very homey and feels very comforting and just feels like something that, again, you wouldn't expect at a restaurant like this, but I'm glad that they have it and they did it really well. That was hearty. Up next, we have the top sirloin, which is served with a baked potato. Wow. Look at all that butter in there. Is that sour cream too? Or is that just butter? It's just butter. That's just butter? Okay. I just love when someone gets something, like you're like, I would like my sirloin cooked medium rare. I want it really buttery. I want it nice and salty. I want it like this. And they're like, heard. And then they do it and you're just like, someone out there was watching over me. And that feels important. We have one of their signature margaritas, the Ruby Rita. It's made with fresh sour, house tequila, and triple sec. 
For some reason, when I heard Ruby read it, I was waiting for this to be red or have Ruby grapefruit in it, but I'm glad that they were like, no, we're gonna make this actually delicious and not make it look scary. Thank you for that. That's how I like my, yep. A margarita really should be just so nice and simple, has a really lovely saltiness to it, but then has the lime cutting through it. The sour mix is just barely there, which I prefer. When that sour mix is just like half of the cup, you know how the drink like starts looking green? And you're like, I know I'm not gonna enjoy this. This one is actually enjoyable because it's almost clear. Like when it looks almost like a limeade or lemonade, that makes me happy. Thank you. So we have the chicken tenders here. They are glorious. And the honey mustard that we had earlier, and again, their honey mustard has that little bit of like a lemon tang to it, but it is extremely creamy. <laughs> Oh, okay. These chicken tenders are extra, extra crunchy. Like, like the crunchiest chicken tender you've had and then times two. But just because it's super crunchy doesn't mean it's gonna be dried out on the inside. Sometimes when they double deep fry something like this, it can just suck the life out of it. But with the honey mustard with it, it's delightful. We have the hickory bourbon salmon. It's glazed with a hickory bourbon sauce and served with grilled zucchini and a rice peel off. This is, a staff favorite here. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. It does, I do have to say, the edges of it look like they're really crispy, but the inside looks like it's still pretty tender. The hardest part with salmon is how dried out it can get. It tastes like the fisherman. It doesn't taste like a fisherman. I don't, I'm sorry. Let's move on, we like it. Okay? I like it, I do like it. I'm just, it's I'm so fresh. sorry. It tastes fresh. <laughs> Still no waiting. thoughts, just vibes. Fun fact, a huge part of Ruby Tuesday is that they have a garden bar. And this was kind of their claim to fame. And this was, I'm, I'm gonna get the years wrong because I refuse to look at my phone and refer to this. I believe it was sometime in the 90s or early 2000s, they took the salad bar, garden bar away. People were not happy. People were like throwing a fit. They were like, I want my salad bar back. That is a huge part of coming here. It's what makes it unique, bring it back. So then Ruby Tuesday said, okay, I'm so sorry. We're gonna bring it back and we're gonna make it even better. And then everyone said, okay, we forgive you. Anywho, a big part of this place is that there's over 50 different types of toppings that you can put on your salad. And the other part of it is that you can make it your whole meal or with any of the entrees, you can get it for an additional, depending what restaurant you're at, what location. It's anywhere from like $4.99 to $5.99 to be able to get this endless salad bar. So while you finish your chicken tendies, you could go up and get some extra salad. And then, I don't know if I'm allowed to recommend this to you, but you can, let's say you're really full, but you're like, maybe I can have more space. And you fill up your whole plate and then you ask for a box to go. And then you get some salad to bring home. I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm saying it's an option, you know. Up next is the Taco Diaz. It's freshly grilled flour tortillas stuffed with your choice of chicken or sirloin, grilled onions, cheddar queso, and a signature sauce. We obviously went with the steak. We're not doing chicken over here. Oh, no, you can't look. <laughs> it's a secret. It's gonna be a secret. That was good. All right, all right, okay. Let's see, do you think you're supposed to put the corn in it? Nah. Nah? Nah. Nah. Good. Great. I am beauty and I am grace. Can you believe that my parents never put me in a beauty pageant? I'm gonna say something strange about these taco dias. When we went to Red Robin, there were those fried onion rings and it came with that like Southwest sauce. Look at this thing. I dunked it in this really lovely, spicy, probably, I'm assuming it's like a creamy spicy, almost like a bang bang sauce. Everything to me is bang bang sauce now. There was a dipping sauce with the fried onions and this tastes like that. And that was one of my favorite menu items. It's this like Southwestern creamy sauce that has a little bit of a zest to it. It's, I wouldn't say like cool ranch Dorito type flavor at all. It's kind of more like a red Dorito, but then that's also wrong. You're just gonna have to taste this and, and understand this pair is better with steak than with chicken, so. Yes. Last menu item of the round. Can you believe my mom didn't put me on American Idol with this voice? <laughs> I was an exhausting child. Baby back ribs. 
The baby back ribs are like the backbone of Ruby Tuesday. This is something that has been on the menu for ages. This is a classic menu item. Now let me read you what is actually in it. Bay back ribs, which is slow cooked for hours, and you have a bunch of different sauces to choose from. You have classic barbecue, Nashville hot, hickory bourbon, chili lime rub, or Texas dry rub. We did the classic barbecue sauce because you gotta know what the classic one tastes like, right? Every time we eat ribs or something like this, I just wanna take it all apart and put it on mac and cheese. It just it's just naturally what I want to do with it. Do you like this or the appetizer we had? Great question. The appetizer sticky ribs, I think are slightly better than the baby back ribs. Is that a controversial thing to say? Not sure. But I think it also has something to do with the sauce. This sauce is a little bit more of that citrusy flavor for me, where the other one, I think I remember, had more of like a thicker, smokier flavor to it. Now, if we were trying this with the Nashville hot, that could totally change my opinion on this. Oh, wow. We're at the end of the round. Yeah, favorites? I really like the taco dia. I think it had great flavor in there. But the salmon did surprise me. Having a salmon dish that's genuinely delicious and cooked right doesn't happen that often. If you're someone who really enjoys salmon, I think this is a restaurant worth trying it at. But if you want to try something fun, different, unique, do the taco dia. It was delicious. It was such a fun time. I feel like very like royal while eating this. Hmm. How do royals? Pinkies out? Here we have a Bailey's hot chocolate that we have overloaded with chocolate and caramel sauce and whipped cream. Oh, it is decadent. It kind of looks like a Snickers bar. Can you even do the pinky? Or is it too heavy? Nope. No. Nope. Oh. It's like I'm really struggling. <laughs> it's just really heavy. This is Bailey's forward. Um, <laughs> this is a good serving of Bailey's. They did not skimp. I want to watch just a really horrible romance movie while drinking my Bailey's hot chocolate. I want to be like, a sad, lonely, and I don't know why I have to be a sad, lonely housewife. I could be a happy housewife as well. But I see myself being kind of like watching my children out, out of the window, playing in the sun, in the snow, and I'm just sitting there and they think I'm drinking my coffee and I'm like, mama's drinking her happy juice. I would like to be a Hallmark Christmas mom and drink those. This is the New York cheesecake and it's served with a healthy dose of strawberries. Also, just the height of this, how many inches do you think that is? I can measure with my thumb, right? That's like a four inch heel. No, it, what? Four three, inches? Maybe, three. Your thumb is it? One, two? Two and a half, three inches? Maybe That's three. not four inches. The back one is. Oh, cause it does kind of get taller in the back. Yeah. It's got some height on it, that is for sure. Thank you, Cheesecake, for existing. You're the texture I've always wanted. You have the right balance of the tangy and the creamy and the sweet. It's truly the dessert made for me, and I would like to say thank you. Oh, so smooth. So this is the chocolate chip cookie skillet. It's served warm with vanilla bean ice cream and drizzled with caramel and chocolate sauce. Oh, this is a lot of caramel, I'm gonna say, because the way it's sticking to the spoon. It's kind of like one of those Toll House cookies where it has the right amount of saltiness to it, you know? And the chocolate chips are melted but have a slight little crunch to them when they get a little melty, a little toasty almost. When it's in the skillet, the edges get a little bit crisp, but the inside is still like ooey, gooey, melty. I'm gonna have to give this to you. Ooh. This is the- Hello, hello my friend. Did you know that that's how, what we pay Chelsea in? Cookie skillets? Yeah, I do think it has good. the right salt to sweet ratio. Wow. It's, and it hits all the right spots. I'm gonna eat that whole thing. Chelsea's gonna um, eat that slowly while also trying to film me. So if the yeah. camera work gets a little shoddy, <laughs> it's what we all signed up for. We're gonna have the chocolate lava cake next. It's topped with vanilla bean ice cream, Oreo cookie crumbs, and chocolate sauce. This looks like a perfect little flower. Like each little part is a little petal. I'm gonna, ooh, and you can break it off like that. I wanna know which one you're gonna like more. Oh. I think I know but let me see. Yeah. No. <laughs> it was ready. 
So I think, well, yeah, try it first. I think I still like the cookie skillet, but I could eat more of the... It's funny that the lava cake is actually the lighter of the two yeah. chocolatey desserts that you can get. I like the crunch that the Oreo Deals. gives you, and it is way more chocolatey, where the cookie skillet gives you a little bit of that saltiness and more vanilla base. I think I'm gonna go with the cookie skillet, though, because it just has a little bit more variety of textures. We have a carrot cake, which is triple layered with walnuts and cream cheese icing. This icing looks delectable. I love a cream cheese icing. That's honestly the only part about carrot cake that I like, but this could be the one, you know? I could change you. It has a really lovely warmth to it from that kind of like cinnamon clove flavor going on. The cream cheese frosting has just the right amount of a little bit of that tang that you need, but still has sweetness to it. And it's also so thick. I'm glad that they layered it like this because for each bite of cake, you're getting the right amount of frosting. So the ratio feels correct. I almost want this as a cake pop for some reason. I've never really craved a cake pop before, but this for some reason, I'm like, I want to take this and squish it and make it into a little cake pop. I was not having high hopes and was kind of skeptical, but I like the carrot cake more than the cheesecake. I also think that every restaurant has a cheesecake, but not every restaurant has a carrot cake. So I think it's worth trying. But the cookie skillet really is the winner of the round. You're gonna take the cookie skillet home. I'm gonna take my gallon of barbecue sauce. We're all gonna leave happy. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> we have to leave here. It's been a really long, lovely shoot. I've had a great time. Chelsea's had a great time. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe to Delish, and then check out your local Ruby Tuesday. It's wonderful here. I've had a ball. I ate so much Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> if you don't order one when you come here, we're not friends anymore. That's just what I'm gonna say. All right. All right. Okay. See you guys later. Shh, it's okay, a creeper McLeese. You're with me now.